Hey YouTube, it's McSquizzle here, and today I'm going to be doing a different kind of video. This video is going to be on my personal silver investment adventures and just a little intro as to how I got started and why I'm doing what I'm doing and how far along I've come. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank the YouTube community for enabling me to educate myself fairly well in a very short amount of time on what silver is and how it can be invested in. Now what you're looking at here is my first silver investment. Oops. Sunshine Mint one ounce silver bar. Now when I saw this on the internet I was like holy shit you can buy silver bars? I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, yes, yes you can. I purchased this one at $21.20 when the spot price was at about 17 which I thought was a screaming deal at the time. But now it's down to 13.94 today, I believe, uh, December 11th, 2015. But yeah, this is how I got started my first purchase aside from this 1963 silver half dollar that I got in a coin lot off of eBay paid sixty dollars I got this one of those fucking golden dollar knockoff coins that the US mint is printing off now and two brand spanking new MS69 uh, coins from 2015. One was a nickel and one was a dime, and I paid 60 bucks for it. But I did get a 90% silver half dollar out of it, so it doesn't really make up for my loss, but maybe it will one day. I basically accidentally stumbled onto a YouTube video one day about stacking silver, and I didn't realize it was a thing before then, and I'm really thankful that I happened to stumble upon that video. Um, currently I have, uh, I'll, I'll just say less than 50 ounces, but I've only been stacking for three months. Uh, my goals are to, I'd like to get to 50 by the end of this year and then double that again each year. So hopefully the spot price stays down. One thing I've noticed about silver is this co it's completely covered up in the media. They don't want people to know that you can invest in precious metals, especially silver, because there's a bunch of mint shortages going on right now. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the paper SLVR trade that actually somewhat dictates the price. I've heard that the London bullion market dictates the price on silver. I'd imagine that the SLVR stock also dictates the price of silver, seeing as how that price usually coincides with the spot price. But today I was watching MSBC as the markets were closing and the, all the stock markets took a hit. Everything. All the, stock, all the major stock markets. Uh, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, whatever. All took pretty pretty bad hits. There was a couple stocks that actually went up, I think maybe eight, possibly. And the question was brought to the reporter's attention, oh, well, what about gold? And immediately just started discrediting gold and that it's a way of the past and the only person you're going to be able to sell your gold to, he, he went to the apocalypse, the financial apocalypse that many precious metals investors at least have some opinions about. I personally think it's going to happen, and it's going to happen here really, really soon. But immediately discredited gold as a form of money. Um, even though it was the only thing that actually rose in price today, it actually rose quite a bit in price today from what it was. Silver went down, but gold went up. Didn't mention silver at all, just talked about gold, stuck it to gold, because right now, about one maybe two percent of people's portfolios have precious metals in them if that number were to increase even two percent I'm told that the entire supply would
have begun. So nobody knows about this, essentially. It's just a very few amount of people. I just find it interesting how the media always says that uh, gold and silver are not good investments, whatever you do. They're never going to be worth any money, blah, 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 blah. When, in fact, uh, J.P. Morgan and a couple other people are just hammering the price down, trying to make up for all the money that they don't have on their short-term contracts. Paper silver. But if you go, like, anywhere, Salvation Army, Mom and Pop, uh, Antique Shops, they'll tell you everybody's going for s even silver-plated things now. Because there's a shortage. You go to anybody that's not a bullion bank or a mass media outlet, and it seems to be that they all feel that there is a shortage. And I've heard a couple reports from Mints that uh, they're on pre-sale, they're they're booked even on pre-sale, so they've sold everything they have before it was even created. I think part of that has to do with the exposure the silver market's been getting, seeing as how it's been in a bear market for the last 30 years. Well, I don't know, 30 years might be an overestimate. It's been in a bear market since 2008, 2011. So don't believe the media because of course they're going to tell you to not purchase precious metals because their executives are busy trying to purchase as much as they can get their hands on. They don't want you to have it because then you'd have money when their fiat currency collapses. I'm not really... I want to do more research on the uh, silver shortages and see if there's any validity behind them, but there's a fixed amount on planet Earth and... I'm sure quite a bit of it's already been dug up. It's not like it's being created nearly as fast as it's being mined. I know China's buying up all the gold. Solar energy plans on expanding its use of silver quite a bit, especially with the Obama administration pushing all this green energy crap that honestly should have taken place probably 10 years ago. We should have started taking care of our environment. Now it's probably too little too late I think but yeah that'll be a major industrial use increase in silver uh, silver coin and bar demand is up from every single year so far so there's definitely more people getting into the market and I'd encourage you to do the same the price can always go lower it may even hit zero but it will not be worthless back to that comment that the reporter on MSBC made. He said that the only person that you're going to sell your gold to is a person with a shotgun. Well, oh, at that he said that you would only be able to sell it to a person with a shotgun. And if you were lucky, you might get a nickel per ounce. Well, here's the, here's the problem with that. Um, silver and gold have always been used as a form of money ever since the Egyptians actually weighed it out and made the purities consistent. It's always been a store of wealth. It's a money. It's not a currency. People will always have desire for something shiny. Maybe one day an ounce could buy you land after shit hits the fan. And if not, that's awesome. I'd love to not have shit hit the fan. I'd love to just see this fiat currency inflate endlessly until one of these becomes worth thousands of thousands of fiat dollars. And then you could buy land or whatever it is that you want to do with it. But I don't think it's going to be that pretty. I think all shit's going to hit the fan and it's going to look like Fallout 5, United States of America. And this is one way of preparing for it, but most people that invest in precious metals have uh, at least one way of protecting it, usually firearms. We're not stupid. We're not gonna, hey, you wanna buy all my gold? Sure, I'll just take, I'll just take all of it down here. Yeah, okay. No, we own, we own guns and knives and uh, protect our assets. There's always gonna be a buyer. It's not because it's money and it's not ever going to be worthless. I feel like somebody 
is going to see value in it for all eternity. Unless, you know, we can find a way to turn lead into gold. That's a different story. What my personal stacking strategy has been so far is get as much as I can as cheaply as I can. I didn't see the point in numismatics when I first got started. So my first purchase was this half dollar. My first actual 999 silver purchase was this sunshine silver mint bar. Followed by six generic rounds at I believe $16.11 each from Gainesville coins. They're all silver buffaloes. And that purchase was followed by some of these elemental rounds from uh, Pen Metals. And that wasn't a very positive shopping experience. It didn't seem like they knew what they were doing. Once I started to accumulate a stack, I started researching more into the shortages. And I hate to admit it, but I jumped in a little too quick on a purchase after this. So I had 10 ounces accumulated before I started researching into the shortages and actually giving them credit. So I went out and paid oh, 155 for a 10 ounce A mark which if I would have just sat on my hands and got today I could get for oh, $151 so I would have saved $4 but I already have this now so if shit hit the fan tomorrow I still got this I ain't gotta wait for it and the mail is not gonna ever come in my first numismatic piece was 2014 Year of the Horse Zodiac sign. It's a really beautiful coin. I'm not sure how high the mint numbers on these are. I know that things before 2014 have a pretty decent premium because they didn't go ape shit on uh, minting them, but I think that 2014, 2015, and 2016, the mints realized that they could charge higher premiums for these things and just printed Buku, Buku mints. Then my only other numismatic piece just came in today. The Silver Bug, version 3 I believe. What I like about these, so this, this was $20 so it's 6 over spot, it came in the case which it should if you're paying $6 over spot, right? But the thing I like about these, as you can see right, maybe, they each come with their own unique serial number and they keep, for what I would guess, relatively accurate counts of how many are minted. And I've noticed that the first version of this is already about a $3 higher premium than this one. So I'm hoping that they make a Zodiac series out of this because the first one had Libra scales and the second one has a Sagittarius bow and arrow. So hopefully if they do an entire Zodiac set I'll have the third one and I'd like to purchase the first one and by the time they all come out the premiums on these things should be ridiculous but it all depends on how much are printed not printed, minted I have my first, what is it, not junk silver, continental, no, constitutional, 40% silver Kennedy half dollar. Along with that silver bug, I also got another one of these shun sunshine mint bars. Wow, I cannot say sunshine mint. Try saying that five times fast. These are gorgeous. Then they have that, I don't have the card reader for it, but they're, this is a security measure right here, so you can tell that all of your 
bars have actually come from that mint. As far as I know, there hasn't been any duplicates of that security system. I'm not sure if you can counterfeit it or not. Which brings me to our next point. Where do I buy silver? Well, there's a couple of sites that I enjoy. I enjoy silver.com. That's where I got this fairy silver bug round and that sunshine mint bar that I just showed you. Um, they were a little bit late on shipping. It got delayed for some reason. It took me eight days using PayPal. Um, but not too bad. It was packaged well. It already came in the case and the coin was in gorgeous condition. So no, no troubles there. Plus I didn't need a signature on it, which I think is a pain in the ass because I work a full-time job. I can't be here to sign for packages and I don't want to go down to the post office to go pick it up. <sighs> so that's good. My favorite bullion dealer so far is probably going to be JM Bullion. I'll tell you why. You can't place an order with them unless it's $100 or, or more. Which might turn some people off who make smaller purchases, but whenever I do invest in silver, I like to put at least $100 into it. But they give you free shipping on all your orders because, like I said, you can't place one under $100. They're really easy to contact customer service wise. They only take uh, four or five days to process a check, as where Gainesville usually takes 10 days and then another five to actually deposit the funds and ship your stuff. So they've got shipping on their side. It's free, it's fast, came on time. Priority mail three day when I got that 10 ounce right there. I trust them. I haven't got anything that's made me question the authenticity of any of their products. Gainesville is an okay place if you can catch one of their daily deals, but what you have to watch out for is shipping. The spot prices on their website may be lower than what they are on JM Bullion, but I assure you, once you pay for shipping, they are not. You won't be saving any money. MCM, I don't, I haven't placed an order with them, but they do free shipping on all orders, so all of their spot prices are way above what you should be paying. Good for small orders though. If you're trying to stack ounces it's not the way to go about it though. Pen metals. Ugh. Pen metals. They are a pain in the ass to get a hold of. They ship slow. It took two weeks to get a PayPal transaction shipped. And then when I got the motherfuckers they were thicker than all my other rounds. I was like, okay, that's weird. Let's do this. Let's do the ping test. Sounded nothing like my other rounds, and that really, really threw me off and had me worried. But I've weighed them. They both weighed the same. And what it was was on the face side of this, where the elemental mark is, there's a lip on the outside that makes it stick up higher than regular rounds. Why does it sound different? I'm not really sure. I think the only way to be sure if it's actually real or not is to just drill through it and ruin the piece. So I'm just going to hold on to it and hope. hopefully it's silver. But don't I, I would not purchase large amounts from pen metals. I don't see them as being reliable. I mean, the one time I, I had to call four times to hear from anybody, and the one time I did call, somebody picked up a personal cell phone and said that the owner of that cell phone, who was supposed to be taking his customer service call, was out fighting a fire. So they're probably a really small mom and pop shop, which I would encourage supporting if they can actually run their business somewhat efficiently and not waste their customers' time. So I like JM Bullion, and I like Silver.com. Gainesville, they're alright. That's the only place that i found that you can get these protective cases for, and they're about $0.49 cents a piece. 
but if you get more than 20 of them, that's like $11 in shipping, so may as well order some silver with them. Yeah, so right now I'm under 50. Um, I'd like to get a little closer to 50 before the year's up. I'm not really sure if that's going to happen, though. I'll keep you posted, but by all means, if you're thinking about getting into silver, check out the silver community here on YouTube. It's a bunch of great people, very educated. They stay on top of things. Don't, don't ever panic buy anything. Just remember that people are always going to be forecasting doom and gloom right around the corner. You, that doesn't mean you have to buy it right now. All the pressure in the world is going to be buy now, buy now, buy now. But people that buy now and get pressured into it regret it a couple of days later when they could have saved money and gotten the same thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know. Um, give me some feedback. What do you think of the stack? What do you think of the video? Where should I go from here? Oh, before I end this video, I've also started stacking fiat currency. I can make a whole nother video on this. I'm definitely a lot better at stacking silver than I am this. Mostly because this can only be transformed into this. This garbage. I spend this if it's in my pocket. Which makes saving it very difficult. Which is another reason why I got into this. But you need to have some fiat currency. It will be worth absolutely nothing at one point, but until it is, it's worth something. And it's the most liquid asset that you can own. Until shit hit the fan, then you want that. So, make sure you're stacking this along with this, because you don't ever want to have to sell any of your silver because you don't have any of this garbage. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Have an excellent night, and... Yeah, keep kicking ass and get ready for all hell to break loose. Hopefully it doesn't, but when it does, I hope you're prepared.